Hey, it's Mark Swatch and MTC Media. So last night was the first night of this in-season tournament for the NBA. And all the anti-NBA people were already saying, oh, no one cares about this. And who cares? And everyone's laughed. And people whined about uh, the uniforms, which I think is dumb because for the generation that the NBA is appealing to, switching uniforms all the time is it's, it's pretty darn good for business. Um, trust me. So this isn't your your or your dad's or your granddad's NBA. But here's what I will say. The NBA in-season tournament is a um, five, ten-year play. It's not a one-year play. It's not supposed to be appealing to people my age, which is what I've been trying to tell people. It's for that next generation and the generation uh, um, after that. So when you think about it this way, this is for the young stars. So it is the Victor Wimbanyamas, it's the Chet Holmgrens, it's when Cooper Flag gets into the NBA, and it's going to be for that those people and those fans. And in a way, it's like OTE. Um, I don't follow OTE, but boy, I can walk into any high school, and for those who don't know, high school coach, I can walk into any high school and start talking to those high school players. And they will rattle off guys in OTE, more guys in OTE than they will in college basketball. The same thing is when I go on the AAU tour, when they're on Under Armour. Ask guys about college basketball players, and there's one or two, oh, yeah, this and that. But, man, you ask them about OTE, their whole face lights up. The NBA is trying to catch that, that this is for that generation. And to be honest with you, last night was pretty much of a success. There were some really great games, and you saw dudes, like, balling. I don't know if it's because the half milli. If you if you get into the end and win this thing, there's half milli per player. I don't know. But dudes played like they cared. And this idea that, oh, they're lazy. They just want to take a paycheck. And we know, we know why people say that, and we know what they're implying when they say that. Not stupid. But the NBA in-season tournament, it's it's – too early to tell, but I'll tell you this. It did not get off to a bad start. So for Adam Silver, I think he's shaking his head. There's going to be things that's going to be corrected. They're going to do some things differently um, as time goes on, as they learn more about what the viewer wants to see, what's the ratings going to be like, what, where it can be improved. So, no, I mean, I thought last night was pretty much a success, and I give the NBA some credit. It, it did come off much better than I thought it would come off. Just like all our podcasts, this podcast is sponsored by MTC Media and Communication for all your web needs, accessibility, uh, data analytics, UX, UI, and the such. Go to mtcmediallc.com. So look, Julius Randle has Julius Randle playoff numbers right now, and you know, if you know anything about Julius Randle, you know what I mean about that. They are, he's struggling individually um, mightily right now. And a lot of it is, it is hard for him to get into a flow. I think this team is evolving really into Jalen Brunson's style. Like last season when he was new, I think there was still some cooperation of Julius Randle and Brunson. Because you didn't know, you knew what you were getting Brunson, but you didn't know no what you're getting to Brunson because Brunson had chances in Dallas to play off other players. You could have said those numbers are a little misleading because look at the guys around him and look at the type of guys around him. But what we found out from USA basketball to early in the season, nah, man, you can run this stuff through Jalen Brunson and really allow him to have control of this team. And I, that's that's really impacted Julius Randle. I don't know what sort of Julius Randle you're going to get going forward. Is there a way that they can find a middle ground where Julius Randle can um, play in this style, maybe having the ball last, so on and so forth? I know for the Knicks, uh, balance is key for them. Julius Randle is not going to win you games when the games count. He's not going to win you playoff games. It's not who he is now. Can he go out on a Tuesday night, win a game in Atlanta, or go out on a on a Thursday evening, uh, you know, at the end of a four-game, six-day road trip in Portland? Yeah, he can do that too. But the Knicks are kind of 
trying to get past that. What the Knicks don't want to do is be second round kings. Get to the second round every year and then lose. We saw this in um, Washington, D.C. with Gilbert Renus' Wizards, Bullets Wizards teams. You saw it there. It was, they were so exciting. They won games. They put up numbers. You know, they'd win a playoff series. Same thing with the John Wall Washington Wizards team. They'd win a playoff game, da, 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 playoff series. And then you get to the second round and you found a way to lose. Um, and the Knicks want to get past that. I think for, for Tom Thibodeau and his job security, um, he wants to get past that. And that might mean that Julius Randle needs to make the adjustment. And, and we'll have to see if he can. Hey, follow all of MTC Media stuff. Go to MTC Media, uh, mtcwithmook.com. That will get you to all the sports stuff. And we have a couple of new contributors to the website. So definitely jump on that. Well, this is your episode of 3 to Make 2 Podcast. I am your host, Marcus Washington. Have a good Saturday.